So I'm here with uh, Siddhant Mohapatra who just beat uh, the top seed at Timur Garev. Siddhant, uh, how was your game today? Actually, the game was quite uh, not that... I felt the game was quite one-sided actually because uh, uh, right after the opening, I got very comfortable position and I just don't know what happened to him. Like he, he usually doesn't play like this. So somehow, I just think he simply overlooked some tactical positions. That's all. Was this your highest win against a GM, highest rated player? Uh, no, no. I have already beaten Salgada Lopez, who was uh, 2640 around in Dubai Open this year. Right. So let's uh, go over your game and try to see how you defeated a 2600 plus GM. Yes. Okay. Went for the King's Gambit, which was quite expected. Did you expect this? Because yeah. uh, he played it once already here. But he has been playing a lot of different stuff like Trompowski yeah. and... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I just didn't know what to prepare. He has already played some Knight A3, Knight H3 also on the first yes. move. Yes, <laughs> A4 and yeah. H4 also. So, I was basically okay. I was mostly hoping that he will go for King's Gambit because in this tournament he hasn't went for this line. So, I was... Okay. Actually, I was quite in dilemma to play E5 or C5 because to, if I play C5, he'll go for the Wings Gambit. Yes, sure. So I was, th so I thought Kings Gambit is far better than Wings Gambit. So did you prepare against the yeah, Kings actually, Gambit? Actually, I saw some setup. Uh, I didn't had much time to prepare, so I saw some games of backrot with Black. So he goes for some 97 setup. So I thought if I could go for that setup, it will be quite good. But why backrow? Because uh, I think Backrot uh, plays quite solid chess and he's like he's he has quite good score against King's Gambit with Black. So I was quite I was following. I'm following him a lot. Okay. So game one, Knight F3. Knight, uh, this is the move. This is not that popular, but I think Knight E7 is quite good. Uh, Black generally is playing trying to play D5 and Knight G6, some something like this. D5. So here is the actual plan. So I can go for knight e3 in some times. Even if has to give the pawn, I'll get two bishops at least. So this was my plan. Even for bishop d3. So this is all theory. Yeah, this is all theory. He played queen e2. Here actually I was not sure about how to continue. Uh, white will slowly try to play c4 and d5 to just uh, maintain and increase his space advantage on queen side. So I actually I was initially thinking of bishop g4 or knight c6. Yeah. Uh, All both of them putting pressure on yeah, d4. On d4 square, which is the only weakness here White has. So I thought okay uh, uh, to just play knight c3, knight c6, so that in some variation also the bishop can go to f5. Actually this move I initially this move actually stops c4. So this was my plan. Uh, C4, you go NDB4. Yeah, right? he played C4, but he had this move. So now this bishop can go to F5 because uh, White cannot save his light square bishop. Now he played this. Okay. Now already uh, White, I don't. I think Black is quite fine here because the queen has no good retreats. If something like queen C3 or queen B3, I just go bishop F5. And then some c2 square, knight c2, at least I have something. Uh, he went queen e2, bishop f5. He took, I, I think already in this position, black is nearly winning because the uh, white cannot simply untangle himself uh, with the knight. Very surprising. Yeah, something like that. Because in some variation, if he removes knight, bishop c5 check is there. I'm actually threatening takes and bishop c5 check. I see no way to prevent it. I, actually, he went for this variation quite fast. So, actually, I was quite amazed and shocked also. Like, if I'm missing something in tactical portion. So, knight d4 here would be met with bishop c5, yeah? Yeah, knight d4. Uh, it will be I, either directly bishop c5 or also takes takes bishop c5. Hmm. Both are quite fine. So he went for this knight f d2. Uh, it took on. Uh, I took on here. Now bishop d6 or did you? So, uh, sorry, I think I made. Oh, sorry, this was the portion. It was black. Here he played king h1. Sorry. Uh -huh. 
to just stop uh, take sticks on bishop c5 but here i think after bishop d6 the funny thing is uh, white is simply losing uh, some heavy materials my threat is simply just to take on e4 and there is no way to prevent it went for knight fd2 mm -hmm. bishop b4 bishop b4 knight e4 now f5 and just and you just, and he just lost a yeah, piece yeah he just simply okay he found the best practical chance rook e4 queen e4 but okay i queen is a queen so <laughs> I just uh, played some some good accurate moves. He, uh, B3. Okay, uh, Siddhant, if uh, let's say for you being an experienced IMs, converting these positions might not be so difficult. But if let's say someone is not so well versed with the co technique of converting, what would be your suggestion in such positions? How should black go and convert his advantage? I think uh, black should not try to hurry, try to uh, immediately win things because if he tries then white can get some kind of fortress or something which is white's only way. If just black just plays slowly, 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 white will eventually uh, make mistake and the, his defensive fortress will break down for sure. So you mean to say black should go for moves like say king h7, yeah, rook e8, yeah, something like just to slowly just increase the advantage instead of trying to go for some e3, e2 immediately because those things will come later also so before that black should put all his pieces in the base square and slowly uh, when black can try for king side attack also with his queen and rook so i think just to play uh, just to avoid any white straight and just i think prophylaxis will be a good way to win this position simply right okay this tops white counter play so he went for rook a1 k a I think already this position is not p5 and this I think is just finish. You finish create his. another weakness. Yeah, that thing he cannot. Actually, he gave a pawn that is even more surprising. I was expecting something like bc4 and some queen, queen a4. a4. Yeah. Uh, I was not sure how to get the pawn, but here uh, he simply gave me the pawn. I think he missed that after queen d5, rook c7, I have queen d4. Uh -huh. And bishop c5 and loses yeah, to back rank mate. loses to queen d1 mate. So, after, I think, uh, now I'm just a, even queen up and a pawn up. So, I I converted quite easily. He played h3. I just, I was just slowly defending the pawns. Uh, here, uh, I went for rook e5 to trade rook g5 if i could exchange uh, one pair of rooks the position will be easier for me to convert queen e6 again to stop like to rook d4 rook d5 so, or something like yeah, that. prophylactic yeah, play something like and he went for bishop d4 which is okay it allows simply e3 and uh, because if he takes queen into e5 and already g3 is hanging he cannot defend uh, both ah, queen nice. g3 and e2 so he went for rook g7 that's a nice trick he had and the point is if i take on he played rook c5 he will play rook c5 and he will take with if i play e2 he'll play rook e5 e1 queen rook e1 and check ah. is there so uh, last trick maybe yeah, in this position actually <laughs> i expected him to go for this honestly and but okay i white black just plays king f8 and everything remains the same white cannot stop e2 here he played rook c1 and he resigned i was about to play rook f5 i think which is just just winning because i'm just threatening e2 rook f1 so it should be right so that was a very nice uh, victory, but uh, as you say, uh, kind of easy one. Yeah, yeah, actually, I never expected, like I initially thought it will be a very good fight for some long game, but I, after I think one hour, I'm simply sitting with the queen up. So that was quite an unexpected. Uh, Siddhant, you have played all the four events, right? In no, this circuit? I played only three. I missed Bhopal due to my semester exams. Okay. And how have been these three for you? And are you finding this Indian circuit? Uh, fun <laughs> to play in or tough? Fun? No, tough, yes. 
and uh, actually the thing is uh, no matter how well you are how well you are prepared you cannot just beat every 2200 and 2100s in india they are too strong like they are simply under underrated they play with some 2350 over of strength and that is really in okay in mumbai i was unbeaten but i drew some four or five games against lower rated so which is not a good result for me and delhi also the same thing is like i drew with some 3 4 lower rated here already i lost second round i lost to 1900 <laughs> so, so that this this win compensates yeah, a bit yeah hopefully this will compensate well so congratulations for this wonderful game and uh, best best of luck for the rest thank of the you. rounds thank you so much